church where they worship the gods of beer. All right, how's everybody doing? Williamsburg was kind of a ghost town. There's a lot of empty warehouses, empty factories. Beacons across the street wasn't here. And as soon as we got here, we kind of paid the price for being frugal because it was kind of a rough neighborhood. And uh, one of the first Friday night happy hours that we ever did, we had a guy that came by in a little ski mask afterwards. He held us up at gunpoint and made off with $30,000 in cash. It's stupid to keep that much cash around. We stopped doing that, obviously. Uh, but then like two weeks later, we had another guy that randomly stole one of our forklifts in the middle of the day. <laughs> Just apparently cruised down 11th Street about three miles an hour. <laughs> All this stuff was like the first month that we were open. And we couldn't afford to lose anything. And so Steve and Tom got in a van, drove around an all day, all night looking for this forklift. Actually found it outside of this pawn shop in Greenpoint, and they just stole it back that night. <laughs> Steve and Tom are awesome. Uh, the biggest problem that we had was with uh, the Mafia. When we first got here in the mid-90s, basically when you went to build anything new in Brooklyn, you were supposed to make up a fake employee on your contracting payroll. You would say that this fake employee worked so many hours, you'd write him a paycheck, and it was a bribe to the mafia. And everybody knew about it, everybody did it, uh, except for Stephen Tom, apparently, they didn't know about it. We got a lot of good press in the Times, in the Post, we had the mayor over here to do a little ribbon cutting, and the mafia heard about it and got upset because they hadn't gotten paid. They sent two guys over to the brewery to extort money from Stephen Tom. Uh, hey. Hey there. So, uh, it's been 24 hours. Got my money? Steve is a super nice guy, but he's kind of a soft-spoken guy. And Steve's initial reaction to the Mafia was, listen, if it's cool, I would rather not do that. Uh, <laughs> which didn't work out. Oh. Oh, that's funny. I could have sworn I said have it today. Yeah, I don't have it. Sorry. Steve actually has uh, a really good friend of his. Uh, I think it's somebody you went to college with. Oh, I love it. Why don't you shut up? Hello, Washington. Hey, how's the weather up there, buddy? Shut up! <laughs> and Ed McDonald used to be a federal prosecutor. He's now a big lawyer here in the city. And uh, I think this guy's awesome because he plays himself in a movie Goodfellas. <laughs> At the end of Goodfellas, in a hotel room, he's the guy that, that puts the wire on Ray Liotta, which is what he did in a true story in real life. He's a perfect guy to call up. And uh, Steve gave him a call. He's like, hey, Dad, I got these mafia guys who are breathing on my neck. What can I do? What advice do you have for me? And the advice that he got from one of our federal prosecutors was, I think you should pay him. <laughs> oh, well, all right then. I don't really want to do that. Uh, the, the whole thing kind of reached a boiling point where the two guys came back over. Uh, they took Steve across the street to a warehouse. Uh, we got a big warehouse across the street where we stock a lot of stuff. They told everybody in the warehouse to get out. And they put Steve in a chair, and one of the guys says, we're going to have to hurt you now. And Steve starts freaking out. And ah, uh, ah, 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 Where's my money? Uh, uh, you gonna give me my money? Where's my money, man? And then the guy starts laughing. He goes, just kidding. We talked about it. We think it's, uh, it's gonna be good for Brooklyn. It's actually gonna be really nice for Williamsburg, so we decided to let you slide. <laughs> Everybody became friends in the end, which is good. Uh, no, okay. They work security for us now on the weekends, which is nice. Uh, it's me and Chris back there. Uh, God, mm. We shipped to about 17 different countries. So we're gonna do uh, Japan, England, Ireland, Denmark, Finland, Turkey, Israel, Australia, Italy, and Germany. We're in Brazil now. We're like the second best-selling beer brand in Sweden. Awesome. Uh, the logo we got from Milton Glaser, who's the same guy designed the I Heart New York t-shirt, but his going rate in the mid-80s for a corporate logo was about $40,000, which is a huge amount of money. We didn't have that much. We had about 20 set aside a budget. He's kind of an eccentric guy, so about three weeks later, he came back to us and said, listen, I thought about it. I think it'd be kind of a fun project. I want to do it, but I don't want you to pay me any cash. All I want is just a small share in your company, and I want free beer for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's totally legitimate. It's actually worded in his contract that he gets free beer for life. I think it's the greatest business deal of all time. Uh, he's almost 90 now, so it's definitely worked out a lot better for him than it has for us. Uh, <laughs>